Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today, it's all about the quest for higher pH. What's going on guys, Devin from Reef Dudes. So if you guys have been following the channel for a while now, you'll know that I've been a little bit obsessed with obtaining that higher pH. Now, I do have a few things against me. For one, I have a lot of fish in my tank. So it's a lot of little mouths respirating, putting CO2 into the tank. Now on top of that, I also run a calcium reactor. Now a calcium reactor is fantastic for keeping your parameters very, very stable. But the one downfall is you're injecting CO2 into your water. So that carbonic acid, the CO2 is essentially lowering the pH of your water. So it's a little bit of a uphill battle with using a calcium reactor as well as having a highly stocked tank. Now over the past year, there's been a lot of different iterations that I've done. Uh, one of the first things I did was run a fresh air line up all the way up to my attic. So I'm pulling in fresh air to my skimmer and that made a decent difference. Now I find almost every different thing I've tried has had about a 0.1 increase. I don't know why, but that seems to be roughly what I get from it. So I had fresh air going all the way to the attic. And again, that was around that 0.1 boost in pH. The next phase was a DIY soda lime scrubber. So this was basically some giant canisters to hold CO2 absorbing pellets. And what I did is because I wanted to tap into my fresh air intake, I didn't really have room inside of my stand. So I made two just shy of three foot towers. I believe it was around two and a half inches by around 30 something inches long. And three of these towers, I kind of went to a manifold and it was pulling all the fresh air from outside through all these towers. So it basically scrubbed all the CO2 out of it and had zero CO2 going to my skimmer. And that also made a decent chunk of difference on it. So that was pretty awesome. And now I'm, you could have had a much smaller one to replace it more often in the stand, but because this was my attic, I don't want to have to go up there very often. I want something that would last months and months at a time. So that's kind of went this big hardcore and overkill. Now, a little while later, I decided to try and simplify it a bit, and I made a little DIY skimmer top version. Now, this cost like 10 bucks to make, not even, it was dirt cheap. And this basically sits on the lid of the skimmer and it recirculates it. Now, I already had the fresh air line outside, and I didn't really want to waste all that effort, so I put a T into it, so it kind of pulls partial fresh air in and partial recirculating. So the recirculating part goes through the CO2 scrubber on top and gets sucked back down, and the other chunk comes from the attic. So it's a bit of a hybrid approach, but it seems to be working pretty well, and I get a bit of a benefit of the fresh air as well. Now, a few of the things I did along the way is I tried experimenting with potassium chloride or KOH, also known as potash, and this worked extremely well for boosting pH. Um, basically, it binds the carbonic acids and helps, which in turn boosts your pH in your tank. Now, this had a downfall. Now, with this, it worked fantastic for about a month or two. Um, great pH, everything was happy. However, it started bringing my potassium levels up far too high. And with that, it almost got to a very dangerously high level where I could risk losing things. So I quit dosing it, did a massive water change, and that was off the table for now. So it definitely was fantastic if you need the potassium, but it does build up and that is an issue. So that's kind of the one side about using a hydroxide based solution to boosting pH. Now there is other forms of hydroxide which I haven't sp experimented with, but I may in the future. Now, another big consideration is the CO2 levels in your home are gonna greatly impact the CO2 levels in your tank. So I did pick up a CO2 meter and this gave me a good idea what the levels were in my house. Now, in general, if you have elevated CO2 in your house, you know, all that water agitation, your skimmer, anything that's helping with air exchange in your tank is going to affect those levels. Um, so my next big project is I installed an air exchanger now this has a few benefits. It's gonna help bring fresh air into your house. So it's gonna decrease the CO2 levels in your house. So that is beneficial to yourself, your family. It's gonna make you more alert, less drowsy, etc. And as a side bonus, it's gonna help boost the pH of your tank. So that was the next big stage. And most recently, I built a little DIY Kelkster for the tank. So that was actually pretty cool. Um, again, super cheap little project to make and that further boosted up my pH. So all these different kind of experiments along the way, and it's kind of crazy looking back at all the different things I did for pH. 
So let's take a look back at kind of some of the pH charts along the way. So if I look back, you know, low of pH 7.75. So that was too low for me. I wasn't really happy there. You know, the high was eight. So that's pretty dang low. Now, keep in mind, some of these graphs, stuff that's happened over time is there was a bunch of fires this summer, so that would have affected it. At one point, I had to replace my skimmer needles. My skimmer was down a bit, and you really saw a drop at that point. So again, looking back, July 25th, 7.75, you know, high of 7.9. So I believe this was actually when my skimmer needle, my skimmer was down for about a week or so. So you can kind of see it climbing back up, but 7.78, like that is sketchy low. Now at this point, 7.6. So to me, this was getting sketchy low. As you can see things boosting up, this was actually when I was playing with Brightwell's boost pH. So I was really low and I started dosing this to my tank and it definitely did help kind of boost my levels back up. Um, I had to dose a fair amount of it, but I was also on my 200 gallon tank. So, but that definitely did help get me by with that. And you can kind of just see how low it got, 7.7. So pretty sketchy. And if you look here, that's probably when I dose some 7.9, boost 7.97. And then here we can see we're okay, we're back up to a happier place, you know, 7.9 to 8.1. So this is probably when I fix my skimmer and I'm getting all that extra air exchange back in the tank. So 8.02, you've seen things are starting to increase, get better. 8.3, pretty sweet place to be. Now, most recently, a couple weeks ago, I did my little DIY calc stir which again made a nice little boost on it. So my low here is 8.03. That was my high a couple months ago. So that's a huge difference. Now, if you're looking at this, the higher the pH, the better the coral growth you're gonna get. It makes it easier for the corals to encrust and grow. So every little tiny increment you can make is going to have kind of a logarithmic improvement on your tank. So there's definitely been a lot of stuff we've tried, but I'm, I'm pretty happy right now with how I'm doing, right? A low of eight that day, 8.06. Like it's a huge improvement over what I used to have. So a lot of crazy experiments. Um, I will link a bunch of the other videos I referenced of these projects as we went through some of the cards. So definitely check those out. But yeah, if you are chasing that pH dragon, hopefully this gives you guys some ideas of what to try and hopefully find some ways to increase coral growth and keep a happier tank. All right, guys, as always, if you enjoyed it, smash that like button if you're new. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next update.